Based on my subscriber demographics, I'm guessing a lot of you guys browse Autotrader constantly, a bit like how my mum likes to be nosy on Rightmove. Well, if you ever do a search based on wanting a cheap, fast car, you might have been surprised to see near new Teslas, Porsche Taycans and Audi e-trons filling up the results at astonishingly low prices. Let's take this 2020 Jaguar I-Pace as an example. It's an I-Pace SE with 23,343 miles on the clock and despite being decently specced out, powerful and basically only worn in, it's up for 21 grand, that's 45k less than new, in just a few years. On the other hand, if you compare this to an equivalent ICE vehicle, granted this one is a hybrid, like say a 400-ish horsepower F-Pace, there's very clearly some extreme levels of depreciation going on in the UK's EV market. So what's going on with the UK's second-hand EV market, and why are EVs basically worthless after just a few years? Well, to answer this question thoroughly, we need to understand a breakdown of the UK's new car market. A big portion of new car sales in the UK has always been lease agreements, and often with businesses. In fact, in the first half of 2023, businesses were responsible for around three quarters of all purchases of new EVs. This means just a tiny amount of the figures the government proudly throw around regarding EV ownership and how one in five new cars sold is electric is individuals actually deciding to spend their hard-earned money on them. A more accurate figure based on real-world privately owned cars would be something like 1 in 20. Now, I'm not by any means an expert on business finance and tax, but one of the first opportunities my accountant spotted earlier this year was that I didn't have an electric company car. You see, thanks to our wonderful government's very heavy intervention in the car market, getting an electric company car is miles more tax efficient than getting a proper car, to the extent that business owners are practically forced into buying EVs to save money. Let's take a look at an example comparing a Porsche Taycan to an M4 Comp, since they're around the same price point. Obviously, we'll be looking at leases, since no one actually buys electric cars, which we'll get onto in a moment. This bit could be a bit boring and numbersy, so if you don't like numbers, here's a timestamp so you can skip past this bit. First up, the car you actually want, the M4 XDrive 530 Comp. List price, or P11D, is £85,100, but the list price is only half the story when it comes to business company cars. Because the car emits 227 grams of CO2 from its aggressive, beautiful tailpipes, you're going to have a 37% benefit in kind charge. So that's 37% of the list price, meaning the BIK is 31,487 quid. Benefit in kind is basically company car tax. You pay a percentage of this each year in additional tax. How lovely. If you're taxed at 20%, that's going to be an extra £6,297 of tax per year. At 40%, which you'll probably be on if you're having an M4, it's £12,594.80 per year in tax. That's deducted from your pre-tax salary. Then you've got VED of 3,540 quid, that's just road tax basically, plus national insurance contributions as well, just more tax, of 4,345 pounds. So on top of the lease cost of the car and the insurance and the running costs, in year one, you're going to be down at least 14 grand in additional taxes, and that's if you're in the lower tax bracket. Oh, and then your capital allowance, aka the tax write-off part of the business, which is based on CO2 emissions, because of course it is, is a mere 6%. So it barely even considered a business expense. I mean, 6% of the cost is tax deductible in total. On the other hand, let's take a look at this 350 kilowatt Porsche Taycan. Similar P11D slash list price of £83,654. No CO2 out the arse though, so it's got a lovely 2% benefit in kind. This basically means you're only paying £335 a year in company car tax on basic rate or £669 a year on higher rate. Then the VED is £0, so that's another £3,540 saved over the M4. 
Then you've got the Class 1A national insurance contribution, which is just £231. So whilst the M4 at minimum is setting you back at least 14 grand, not including the lease in the first year, the Taycan is going to cost between 566 and 900 pounds in various taxes, which is just astonishingly different. Once you factor in the downright disgusting capital allowances for electric vehicles for businesses at the moment, you're left in a situation where the government is practically taxing businesses out of ICE vehicles. The way they've done it is clever because when you look at each tax separately, it doesn't look too bad. But then when it's combined, you are literally forced into EV ownership as a company director. So yeah, that goes for employees as well. If you if you ever looked at you know a salary sacrifice scheme for a car, you'll notice that the equivalent BMW is far more expensive than an EV. That's mainly due to the benefit in kind. So yeah, it's unsurprising that so many businesses buy EVs. They just don't really have a choice. Also, since the benefit in kind is calculated based off of the P11D, which is the list price when it was new, you're still paying the same company car tax on a second-hand M4, if you were wondering. This economic policy has left business owners leasing EVs to save money and then flooding the used car market with three-year-old models when the lease agreement ends. These cars weren't bought because they were good, they were bought almost solely for tax purposes. So yeah, the EV market is rigged by our government and the benefit in kind rules mean that you're incentivized as a business to constantly have new cars to avoid buying used. Now that's hardly eco-friendly, is it? I think the only reason that this rule is in place on EVs is to artificially boost the new car sales figures. But hey, that is just my own opinion. Right, so that's that's basically why so many company directors, personal cars, company cars and fleet vehicles are electric all of a sudden. It's not because anyone actually cares about the environment. I mean, come on now. It's simply the only option the government leaves you with unless you like throwing money down the drain. So you've now got a market flooded with used EVs that businesses wouldn't consider buying and private individuals don't care about. The supply of these things is astronomically high whilst the demand is very low. What this means is that these things are next to worthless just three years after leaving the factory. But it's not just huge supply and no demand driving prices down. There's also the fact that consumers are still yet to trust that the batteries won't be degraded to shit on the used market. Plus, garages have no idea how to value these vehicles, so they tend to offer extremely low part exchange values on these cars. Also, the British public aren't stupid. We all know that if anything happens to your EV, it is a nightmare to fix in comparison to a normal car. I remember a family member telling me that their neighbor's Tesla was sat on the drive with a shattered windshield for months because they didn't have any spare windshields available. And that's just something basic. I mean, imagine if you have battery problems. Fixing those out of warranty could be enough to bankrupt a man. I'm not joking. I mean, take a look at this poor EV owner's experience. If you're lucky enough to be in this kind of situation, then... These cars are basically disposable. The unfortunate reality with a large portion of the EV market is that when the battery goes, the entire car goes. Unlike a majority of half-decent internal combustion engine vehicles, it's totally realistic for a second-hand EV owner to end up getting stung and losing near enough the entire value of the car. The reasons I've just stated make up most of the big reasons why the second-hand EV market is a mess, but there are also some other factors at play going beyond just that. With the cost of living taking a big toll on most households, especially over the last couple of years in the UK, it probably comes at no surprise that many households in the market for a car don't feel like buying luxury cars anymore. Despite the massive depreciation of most EVs, they are still, by UK standards, mostly in the luxury car category, as 20 plus grand is still a big chunk of money for most people. Why would you fork out 20 grand for a used Tesla when a Golf does the same job for half the price? The other options for cash-poor households, which are becoming increasingly commonplace, are leases. Why would you save up 20 grand when you can just put down a couple of grand and then get a brand new Tesla for £400 a month? Finally, there is the double-edged sword of constant innovation. Everyone knows that just like computers, EVs are going to get better and better over time. ICE vehicles don't really become obsolete. However, an EV with a 200 mile range could most definitely become next to worthless if Tesla do actually manage to come out with a Model 3 with, you know, a 600 mile range. 
in a couple of years' time.